One of the core foundations of decentralized blockchain technologies and cryptocurrencies is consensus mechanisms. The two most popular consensus mechanisms, proof-of-work and proof-of-stake, are used by some of the most popular cryptos such as Bitcoin and Cardano, respectively. But did you know that there are actually many different types of consensus mechanisms? Welcome to Crypto Sketch 101. We're the number one go-to spot for all things crypto, and we're glad you've stopped by. If you love cryptos as much as we do, please give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're diving deep into consensus mechanisms. We'll take a look at what they are and how they're used. We'll examine the two most popular types of consensus mechanisms and even take a look at some lesser known ones. By the end of today's video, you'll be a consensus expert, so let's get into it. So, to start off, what exactly is a consensus mechanism and what is it used for? Simply put, a consensus mechanism is a system that is used to verify transactions and maintain the security of a blockchain network. On decentralized networks, consensus mechanisms provide a way to come to an agreement on a single state of the network or single data value. Think of it like this. In a centralized system, databases typically hold critical information. The information can range from anything from financial to transactional data. The power to update and maintain the database lies with a central administrator or authority figure. The central administrator can add, delete, make updates, verify information, and so on and so forth. In a decentralized system, there is no central administrator or authority figure. The task of updating and verifying information is distributed amongst hundreds of thousands of participants. As such, a consensus mechanism is needed as a standard that all participants can agree upon to verify transactions. While there are many different types of consensus mechanisms, the two most popular are proof-of-work and proof-of-stake. Proof-of-work is used by the world's most popular cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. It requires network participants to spend time solving an unpredictable mathematical puzzle in order to prevent the system from being hacked. In cryptocurrency mining, proof-of-work is commonly employed to validate transactions and mine new tokens. There are a few problems with proof-of-work though. The mathematical problems are so complex that they require special, high-powered computers in order to solve them. And those computers require a lot of energy to operate. Some have raised issues with the amount of energy needed, claiming that such energy consumption is bad for the environment. Another problem, although unlikely, is known as a 51% attack. If a single mining entity obtains 51% of Bitcoin's hash rate, or the measure of computational power used to verify transactions, it can temporarily break the rules by double-spending money and blocking transactions. Proof-of-stake seeks to reduce the amount of computational power needed in order to verify transactions. With proof-of-stake, coin owners offer their coins as collateral for a chance to verify transactions and validate blocks. These coin stakers are known as validators. The block is then mined, or validated, by validators who are chosen at random, rather than employing a competition-based process like proof-of-work. A coin owner must stake a certain amount of coins to become a validator. Before a user can become a validator on Ethereum, for example, they must stake 32 Ether. Blocks are validated by multiple validators, and they are finalized and closed when a specific number of validators confirm that the block is correct. Proof-of-stake is a protocol that aims to address the environmental and scalability difficulties that plague the proof-of-work protocol. A competitive approach to transaction verification is applied when it comes to proof-of-work. As a result, people are naturally motivated to find ways to gain an advantage, usually in the form of more computers, which leads to more energy consumption and negative environmental impact. The proof-of-stake system attempts to address these issues by effectively swapping staking for computational processing power. The network randomly determines a person's mining capabilities, and because miners can no longer rely on more computers to gain an edge, this should result in a significant reduction in energy use. Like proof-of-work, there still remains a risk of a 51% attack, although it is unlikely because an individual or group would need to own 51% of the staked cryptocurrency. As previously mentioned however, there are many different types of consensus mechanisms. 
Here are a few that you probably haven't heard about. Proof of burn. Proof of burn is a method of obtaining a proportional right to mine new blocks and verify transactions by purposely and permanently destroying or burning tokens. The more tokens a miner burns, the more likely he or she is to be chosen as the next block validator. Miners in a proof of burn configuration can use significantly less energy than miners in traditional proof of work systems by demonstrating their commitment to the network. They can do this through intentional token destruction rather than using computational resources and utilizing sophisticated mining hardware. Proof of History Proof of History is most commonly associated with the Solana network. The Proof of History protocol is based on a built-in historical record that certifies the precise time when each on-chain event took place. Unlike most other blockchains, which require several validators to agree on when each transaction occurred, each Solana validator maintains its own internal clock by encoding time in a simple 256-bit secure hash algorithm. When Solana's validators communicate, a cryptographic verification of each message's relative order and time is maintained on the network ledger. This allows the network to adjust its schedule to meet any potential network delays and ignore local time. This enables the rapid distribution and reassembling of all transaction data without the need to wait for sequential block confirmations across the whole network. Solana is able to achieve impressively rapid confirmation times without losing security, while still preserving a relative degree of decentralization by obtaining blockchain consensus via proof of history. Proof of Activity Proof of Activity is a protocol that combines proof-of-stake and proof-of-work protocols, allowing users to mine and stake their tokens to validate blocks. In most proof-of-activity arrangements, miners compete to mine new blocks in exchange for token incentives. The blocks, on the other hand, do not contain transactions, instead, they are empty templates with the transaction title and block reward address contained in them. Only token holders are qualified to act as validators, and the information in the transaction title is used to select a validator node at random to sign the block and confirm it to the blockchain ledger. Lastly, proof of authority. To help validate transactions and generate new blocks, proof of authority employs a reputation-based architecture. Validators in a proof of authority consensus blockchain are typically users who have been chosen and approved by other network participants to act as system moderators. As a result, validators are usually institutional investors or other significant partners in the blockchain ecosystem that have a stake in the network's long-term success and are prepared to reveal their names for the purpose of transparency and accountability. Proof-of-authority blockchains require validators to put their social capital on the line, whereas proof-of-stake blockchains demand validators to put their financial capital on the line to ensure acceptable acts. However, in addition to staking their reputation, Several proof-of-authority blockchains demand prospective network validators to invest considerably in the network financially. This allows the network to weed out would-be validators with ambiguous or shady motivations while monetarily rewarding honest nodes that are prepared to commit for the long haul. And that's all we have for today's video. We hope you got a good understanding of the two most commonly used consensus mechanisms and also learned a little bit about some lesser-known ones. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining us today and we'll catch you in the next video.